once again, you've somehow landed on Grumpy Science. Um, oh, wait, 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 we, before you go, if you haven't seen this, we are actual scientists. I'm Bob Dennis. <laughs> this is Mark Tomerdahl. We are Grumpy. And, uh, and in we, the later stages of our career, we think. <laughs> I may and, very well be past my career. I don't know. I haven't gotten a paycheck for this month yet, so we'll see. Um, anyway, we talk a lot about uh, stuff related to uh, medical devices, uh, brain science, and some of the inventions we've made and how they relate to the rest of the world. So we have a bias built in because our stuff is just way better than the other stuff that's <laughs> out there. Or we'll, well, we want it to be. And we, we try to be careful. And mostly we try to put good instruments into people's hands so they can um, do self-hacking, brain hacking, neurohacking, um, good quality, scientific grade information at an affordable price. And that brings us to the topic of the day today. And we're talking about scientific instruments and in order to talk about scientific instruments, you have to talk about certain words like sensitivity, precision, and accuracy. What you see a lot on the internet is precision. Like I am precisely 102.774 years old. Not precisely. Well, it's a precise number, right? But it's not accurate. I'm at, more accurately, I'm somewhere in my mid 50s. That's accurate. Really? You're that yeah, old? Believe it or not, I've been long, uh, around long enough to to really become annoying and grumpy. <laughs> so so you see a lot of re very precise numbers in the fields that I deal with. You know, people have to use precise frequencies of 7.830 hertz. Rubbish, right? Okay, what really matters is are you accurate? And when you're accurate, you know, not just precise, which is the number of digits that are involved, but accuracy, like how, how much do those digits reflect something real? You know, like are you making a, a measurement? You're way better off with accuracy than you are with precision. But once you have accuracy, you want to be sensitive. You need to be sensitive to changes. And, and sometimes biologically, those changes can be large and not important. But when it comes to the brain, we're talking about some very, very subtle, very small changes that uh, that can that can be very important, and so um, this brings us to you know medical equipment that's used to measure the brain and try to tell you something of clinical or health related importance in the brain. And what really matters, you know, all of them are very precise because they yeah. can generate more numbers than so you want to see. Let's use an example. Let me give you an example of like if you got up and measured yourself with a brain gauge. Let's say you got up. First thing in the morning, and you're extremely drowsy. Some of your scores are going to reflect that, and you're not going to do all that great. And then how long does it take you to get over that, what's called sleep inertia? How long does it take you to basically wake up, you know, two, three hours, all of a sudden you've had your coffee, and you're cranking, and you're working the day, and you test yourself, and you're like, wow, I test a lot better. Mm -hmm. Does that mean your brain health has actually changed? Or does it just fluctuating within the normal range? Right. So you might change from, say, let's just throw out a number. Say, say 100 is perfect. Let's say you were 80 in the morning and 90 two, three hours later. And you say, okay, well, that's good. Now, does that mean that the 80 is indicative of some problem? Of course not. But if you test yourself again the next day and you test yourself when you're really drowsy, and you're 60, mm. and then you're later in the day, you're 70 or 80 when at the best of your day, and it continues to decline. Well, maybe you should quit taking whatever drugs yeah. you're taking, or too get some more sleep, much. you know, or right. maybe you haven't slept any, or or maybe you started taking nootropics and or some kind of uh, some <laughs> regular uh, vitamin supplement or something, and all of a sudden your scores were. 80 and 90, all of a sudden they're uh, 90 and 100, or 100 and 100 and 100. But in other words, you have to take context into account when you mm -hmm. talk about sensitivity. Right. Um, so when something is sensitive, when an instrument is sensitive, you're going to see a lot of variation, but that variation may be normal, right? So as I said, a lot of instruments are very precise. Their variation is going to be noise if they're not accurate, then their variation is due to noise, right? With the brain gauge, is it's it's very accurate and it's very sensitive. So you're going to actually see variation in the measures that you get on the brain gauge, 
all of which fall into the normal range, like different, you can be different body temperatures at different times of the day, and that's all actually pretty normal, right? Um, but it's, don't let the sensitivity um, uh, uh, get you too worked up, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's probably a lot more sensitive than you'd need for, for normal use during the day. And let me give you a counter example, right? The Goldilocks thermometer, right? It's three values on it, right? Too hot, too cold. And just right, which we'll we'll call that warm, right? Well, there's a lot of temperatures in that you know warm range or that too hot range, right? But that's a that's a crude thermometer, right? There's three red, yellow, you know, maybe icy blue or something like that. That's that's that temp that thermometer may be very accurate, it's just not sensitive. Right? Yeah, there's actually an example of this with our friends at the FDA. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we have more stories on that, but I think in uh, what. what in the 1970s, they, uh, there was somebody named Dr. No there. But <laughs> no, that was not her name. Uh, she's more recent than that. But, uh, uh, but we'll basically, leave that for day. basically, what they require for people to get approved for concussion testing, and they did not budge off this for years. They've actually gotten much better, but they didn't budge off this for years. They would say, you have to compare this CAT scan. It's called a benchmark. Okay. Yeah. So the problem with brain health. As a non-brain scientist, but I do have a brain, I have an interest in brains too. Here's what I think is one of the biggest problems, and Mark has just brought it up, with brain health assessment, is that they use a benchmark. Well, this is the, and sometimes you'll hear, well, that's the gold standard. Well, in brain health, there have been a lot of different measures that have been benchmarks, that have been gold standards that don't tell you anything. That's the problem. So how do you compare a device that is really accurate and, and really sensitive, how do you get it to be at least as good as something that you can demonstrate is not good at all. In other and words, how do you compare were, yeah, a you, regular thermometer to the Goldilocks thermometer? Yeah. How would you it's basically the CAT scan, for those of you who don't know, it's basically doesn't have a whole lot of resolution. It's good at picking up really big changes in the brain. Yeah, in, in regions like sort of, you know, macroscopic, I think. So in the depth, and if there's something wrong, it is no longer mild TBI or concussion, it is moderate TBI. So the first people that got approved for concussion actually got approved for moderate TBI because they could only compare to the cat yeah, scan. Yeah, it was such an insensitive measure that you had had to have essentially like, I don't know. Would it be well, fair they had to, to turn their yeah. threshold down. They actually had to turn their numbers down right. to get it to match in order to pass FDA approval. Yeah, it's your tax dollars at work, folks. Your tax dollars at work. <laughs> you got to make something at least as good, um, and, and match the results of something that doesn't work, and that's that's unfortunate. But you know, they're you know, in defense of the FDA, they're trying to make sure that things are at least as good and getting better. But when you're benchmarking with something that doesn't work well at all, you kind of need to just admit that and move on until you until you actually have something that's better, and to to link approval of a of a really accurate and sensitive device to the performance of something that everyone understands and knows doesn't work. And that, that's just, that doesn't serve anyone. Hey, Fair this enough. is our shortest video yet. I think that's so all actually, we have to say. So actually on the next video, which will take a little while, we want to talk a little bit more about the, the dynamic measures. And those are measures that, you know, can, you measure with functional measures that you can't measure with things like CAT scan. So. Okay. Well, I think that's it. So we'll, See you later. You bet.